using bullet points will allow you to tap into your zone of genius. And I guarantee you, you have more great things to say already in your mind that you don't need to have scripted out. So keep that spontaneity in play. Keep that confidence in play by just having bullet points of the major areas that you want to touch on. You can have some sub bullet points as well. That's fine. But you don't need to write everything out word for word. There you are, and here I am, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode three of Solo Podcasting Simplified. I'm Jason Sircon, and before we get started, no matter where you're at in the world, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on your favorite podcast app, please smash that subscribe button, smash that follow button, so you don't miss any of the exciting content that's to come on future episodes of Solo Podcasting Simplified. Today, I want to share three bulletproof ways to speak with confidence as a solo podcaster. This is one of the most important aspects of solo podcasting, that confident voice, being very comfortable with your story and your message and projecting that to your audience. When you do that with purpose and you do that with conviction and you do that with confidence, that's going to get people invested in your story, in your brand, in your message, and most importantly, in you. Does that happen overnight? No, it takes time. You have to build your skill set. And it's just like anything else that you've ever done. More than likely, the first time you did it, you sucked. I can't speak for everyone and I can't speak for you, but I know the first time that I tried to walk, I sucked at it. I fell, but I kept getting back up and trying again. At least this is what my parents tell me. But based on what I've seen through my life, no skill is gained without practice. Yes, you can be a natural at one thing or another, but I guarantee you any natural is putting in some work behind the scenes that they're not talking about. So they continue to look like a natural. I feel that I have a very confident approach with the way that I do solo podcasting. Did I get here overnight? Absolutely freaking not. I can go back to the beginning of my podcasting career well over eight years ago as I stand here and speak to you today and know full well and tell you with complete confidence and understanding that I was nowhere near as good as I am now. And I'm not saying that, I'm, I'm not saying it to brag. I just know that I put a lot of work into building my skill set in this capacity. The objective being that I want to project a clear message to you, whether you consume this through video or whether you consume this through audio. I want to make sure that what you're hearing is something you want to continue hearing, something that you want to come back to, to listen to again, something that you want to subscribe and follow so you can hear future episodes and future messages, future tips. I feel that I'm doing this in a way that allows that to happen. But what ends up happening a lot in the podcast space is that people just aren't comfortable. They're just not feeling like they belong. There's a lot of self-limiting beliefs in this space. And today, I want to take a small step forward in eradicating those self-limiting beliefs because they can be damaging. Back on episode two, I had mentioned the word pod fade. Pod fade is when a podcast gets started and then after X amount of episodes, just goes away. It ends with, thanks for listening, we'll see you next week or some form of that. And then you never hear from that person or that podcaster again. Unfortunately, there's probably more podcasts in the graveyard of podcast world that have experienced that fate then there are active podcasts that are regularly, consistently bringing you new content. It's really pretty sad. And a lot of it comes down to not having a plan of action, just letting yourself get burnt out, and ultimately getting fixated on numbers that then tell you in your mind that you're not doing things right and you're really not good at this and I'm not going to ever get good at this. Why should I waste my time? I'm done. You don't want that to happen. 
you have to understand on the front end. Podcasting is a marathon, not a sprint. This is a long game. And the more you put in the practice swings, the more you get better at speaking. And that can be practiced off the podcast mic. But as you develop those communication skills, you get better at communicating into a camera, into a microphone, in talking with others. Now, we're solo-based, so we're not talking about guests specifically, but I've used conversations in real life to hone my podcast skills. I'm the guy at the grocery store that's going to talk to the cashier, whether they want to engage with me or not. I want to use that time to interact with someone so I can practice asking questions. It could be a surface level question, like how was your day? I, as a podcaster, try to go a little deeper and ask something more engaging, maybe something about what's happening in the store, something to get them talking, even if it's just for a couple minutes. These little actions don't seem like much on the surface, but they compound over time. And the more you do them, and the more you take advantage of all of these great opportunities that you have at your disposal, the more you're going to bring confidence to the microphone. And as you bring confidence to the microphone, that's going to help you connect with your listeners. It's going to help you build that unbreakable bond that makes them trust you, makes them come back for more, and makes them turn to people in their circle and tell them that they need to be listening to what you have to say as well. That's the objective that you want to achieve with your podcast initiatives, because that is going to serve whatever your brand objectives may be. Speaking with confidence does not happen overnight, but as this skill set comes together, you're going to have much more posture. You're going to have much more conviction in the message you're delivering, and you're going to have much more fun with the process. I have an absolute blast creating solo-based content. One of the big reasons I wanted to do this podcast, mostly in solo format, mostly because it fits the theme, obviously, but I have an absolute blast having conversations with just you, making this connection with you as you watch or you listen to this episode today. I know that you and I are sharing some intimate time together, even if it's for a few minutes. You're looking for ways to speak with confidence as a solo podcaster. I have some tips that are going to help you do that. And I want to deliver those tips with confidence, clarity, and conviction so you can make the most of these tips and put them into action with everything you do. So without further ado, three bulletproof ways to speak with confidence as a solo podcaster. Let's get into it. Tip number one is to build your content around your zone of genius, around the things that you talk about every single day, the things that you could talk about even if no one was listening. Now, I know we're not splitting any atoms with this tip, but it's very important to understand that the more energetic and excited you are about the content you're creating, the more confidence you're going to project when you share it through the microphone on your podcast. Now, if you've built a brand, a company, a coaching business, a consulting business, more than likely you have a message, you have a mission, and you know what you want to speak about when you communicate with your current and potential customers and even people in your audience that are just circling right now. They're not necessarily ready to make that buying decision, but they're in your orbit. You're providing value. You're bringing impact to their world. They're going to continue to seek that value through your podcast. And they're going to get closer to making that buying decision when you speak to them with confidence. More than likely, you can speak with great confidence about whatever you built your brand around. So don't try to venture outside of that because what will more than likely happen is you're going to lose your passion. When you lose your passion because you're not truly entrenched in what your brand is all about, that's going to lead to that ugly pod fade that I talked about before. And it's going to lead to you not projecting your message in that confident fashion that you need to. That can really spiral into some ugly things. So make sure that your content is centered around your zone of genius and bring your expertise to the stage with the spotlight shining brightly. And when you project that message, sing it to the back of the room. 
get it in front of every single person. And the more confidence you gain in not just your speaking abilities, but in your ability to tell your story and to make those strong connections, the more natural this solo podcasting approach is going to be for you. If you're a results-driven coach or consultant that really wants to sink your teeth into solo podcasting and produce multifaceted content that elevates your brand in undeniable ways, the Solo Podcasters Mastermind is calling your name. This fully interactive 60-day mastermind was built to help you develop the right mindset for podcasting, hone your solo podcasting skills, build a well-oiled podcast infrastructure to grow your show, and give you access to support from other solo podcasters. You'll even get assistance with post-production and have your show launched in less than 60 days. Get all the details and register to be part of the next Solo Podcasters Mastermind session at jasoncircone.com slash mastermind. Tip number two for speaking with more confidence as a solo podcaster, do not script out your entire episode. Instead, use bullet points of the major speaking points that you want to touch on. When you script out every single word that you want to say on your podcast, for one, that can be incredibly time-consuming. And then when you go to read it, it sounds like just that. You're, it sounds like you're reading. So you're losing that spontaneity. And that, in turn, is going to impact the confident delivery that people need to hear from you so they get invested and want to stay tuned into your show and ultimately take the next step to stay tuned into you. Using bullet points will allow you to tap into your zone of genius. And I guarantee you, you have more great things to say already in your mind that you don't need to have scripted out. So keep that spontaneity in play. Keep that confidence in play by just having bullet points of the major areas that you want to touch on. You can have some sub bullet points as well. That's fine. But you don't need to write everything out word for word. To make something sound very, very powerful and spontaneous when you're reading it, you need to be incredibly skilled. And I am of the school of thought that if you are projecting your message and talking about the items that you believe in the most, that you have built an entire brand around, delivering them with that spontaneity and that confidence and just that overall off the top of your head riffing, just utilizing the thoughts that you're more than likely telling others when you're speaking to them, when you're coaching them, when you're consulting with them, or you're creating content in other capacities, there's so much more value in that. And that's going to get people invested in the content that you're creating for your podcast. And the third bulletproof way to speak with more confidence as a solo podcaster, tell stories. Stories are where it's at. We as humans love stories. I know I do. I always think about when my friends and I get together and we start reminiscing about the days of old. We start telling stories from our childhood, and it's amazing the things that we can remember from that time period, but we can't remember what we had for dinner last night. I digress. There's so much value in those stories because they're memories in our lives that we can continue to relive, and it's always made me realize that I'm surrounded by a bunch of great storytellers in my life. That's a good thing, but us as humans, we're conditioned to love stories, and that's what impacts us and brings the most value into our world. Think about it. Stories were infused into our lives at the earliest of ages. We had our parents reading to us as babies, and then that continued through the years, and then we learned to read ourselves, and now we're reading stories and consuming this great content. And then we get to a point where we're telling stories, and that happens at an early age too. I always think of my nephew. He's six right. I'm sorry, he's five right now, and when he tells me stories, he leaves out no detail. I love listening to that. That's the power of storytelling. That's how you get somebody captivated. A five-year-old telling a 43-year-old a story is keeping him engaged because he's doing it with passion. And regardless of what the story is, in his mind, he's telling it with confidence. That's beautiful. Storytelling is where it's at. Think about anything that you invest your time and attention into. More than likely, there's a good storytelling element to it. I love pro wrestling. I've been a pro wrestling fan since I was a kid. As an adult, what I've come to appreciate more are the storytelling elements that are built within pro wrestling. There are so many people that will shit all over pro wrestling and make fun of people that are fans, but 
it's a form of entertainment. Who is anybody to shit on somebody's form of entertainment that they love, right? Story for another day, but the point is, there are a lot of great storytelling elements within within wrestling that keep me captivated as a fan. Your podcast can serve that same purpose. To illustrate my point, let me tell you my story of solo recording, solo podcast recording. When I first started doing this, 2015, sat down to do my very first solo podcast recording. Had no idea what I was doing, really was green to the whole process, but I knew that I wanted to do a solo episode of my show. More than likely, you have many of the same questions that I had when I sat down to do that. How am I going to sound natural? How am I going to get this content over? Do I, do I even have to talk about it? Does my audience give a damn to just hear me? I knew the only way to answer those questions was to hit play and see what happened. So it was a beer podcast. So I cracked open a beer and I got started, hit record and just let it roll. Now, I did not script it out. I had my bullet points. And this wasn't even like I looked it up to see, well, what do you do in this case? I just knew I was like, I don't want to go to the trouble and the effort of having to write every word out. So I'm just going to do bullet points. That's a lesson that I've been able to carry to me, carry with me to this day. I got going. Everything was fine. Probably going to probably 15 minute mark. And for whatever reason, when I got to that point, I could not get past whatever I wanted to say. Could not deliver that point with confidence. Did not like it flubbed it a bunch of times instead of just stopping pausing for a minute taking a few breaths taking a sip of beer collecting my thoughts i hit stop and deleted the whole damn recording now me now <laughs> i look back at that guy in the past and is like dude no like don't don't sweat it you can fix this this is what i've learned through almost a decade of podcasting you can't strive for, for perfection. You have to understand that mistakes are not only inevitable, but they can be beautiful. Perfection sucks. I'm sorry. Think of how boring our world would be if everything was perfect. We wouldn't know what to, what to aspire to, what to try to reach, because everything is perfect. You ever seen the movie Pleasantville? Before their world gets shooken up when... The two main characters get into their world. Go watch this movie, but you'll see everything was just pleasant. Everything was just perfect. Ugh, scary. A little bit of adversity, a little bit of conflict that makes for great stories. It great, makes for even better outcomes. Think of the hero's journey. If the hero just got to the top and achieved exactly what he was looking to get. What good is that? You have to experience a little bit of obstacle, a little bit of, is this going to happen? Am I going to make it? Is the hero going to pull this off? You have to have that seed of doubt. That makes for great storytelling, and it makes for more confidence in your ability to tell those stories. Because once you start to understand that it doesn't have to be perfect, that you can screw up here and there, and the very major glaring mistakes that you don't want the world to ever know about, you can fix them in post-production. That will make you a more confident podcaster. It'll make you a more confident speaker overall. I guarantee anyone listening to you, and you could, you may have this mindset listening to me, you know, and I know, I'm not going to get perfection every single line. There's going to be flubs. There's going to be screw-ups. That's okay. Anything glaring, fix it later. Focus on bringing value to your audience. If you do that, your confidence will continue to grow over time because it's all about the reps. If you're scared of being on the microphone because you don't feel you're going to be confident, embrace that fear because at the beginning, you're right. You're not going to be. It takes a minute. You're never going to know what step two is needed, what step two needs from you if you keep yourself at step one. Step one is pressing the record button, getting started, and seeing what happens as you deliver your message. Step two is building on it, step three, step four, and so on. That's what makes you a confident speaker. Focus on that, disregard any type of attempt at perfection, and focus on telling great stories. I guarantee you have some. 
put those stories out there and the right people are going to resonate with them and they are going to come running to you and then they're going to tell others to run to you as well. That is going to bring down the curtain on episode three of Solo Podcasting Simplified. I hope you had a great time. I know I did. Until we meet again on episode four, this is Jason Sircone on Solo Podcasting Simplified. Good talk. See you out.